I got the notion that uh, they mouth is open and uh, all that's just talking when uh, they ain't comparing to me. Yo YouTube, what's up? I'm Tim. This is the Cash County and AC Sports Report. You guys saw the game last night. It's really incredible to me, and I mean, this is a testament how, to how good the Heat's defense is, that the Heat were even close last night. The Heat were able to keep it within three. They lose 86-83 to uh, the Dallas Mavericks. The series is now tied 2-2. Two two. Now, I just want to, for those of you who aren't usually on this channel, I'm going to let you know I'm a Sixers fan, so I'm not a fan of any of these teams. So I'm unbiased when I'm talking about them. And I'll go through the stats, and then I'll give you my opinion on what LeBron James did last night. Because it was just, well, I'll get to that. First of all, uh, for the Heat, you know, LeBron James at 8 points. Chris Bosh had a nice game, 9 and 19 shooting, 6 of 8 from free throws, 24 points. Dwayne Wade had another nice game, 32 points. He's keeping the Heat in this series right now, offensively, scoring-wise at least. Mike Miller's got 6 points, Udonis Haslam has 4, and Mario Chalmers has 5. Now, if you go down to the Mavs, uh, Dirk Nowinski didn't even have that great of a game. 6-19 shooting, 21 points. Sean Marion, who's had a pretty consistent series, 16 points, 4 rebounds. Nice game out of him. Tyson Chandler was a monster on the boards last night. 16 rebounds, 13 points. Nice job out of him. J.J. Barea, or as it says here, Jose Juan Barea, because everyone calls him that. 8 points. Off the bench, Jason Terry took a decent amount of shots, ended up with 17 points, so, you know, it, it appears he's almost as clutch as Dirk now, according to Dirk's, uh, the way he put it the other day, because he was saying that Terry wasn't clutch, well, Terry had almost as many points as you. Sean Stevenson comes up with 11 points in this game, and then, really, I mean, Peja Storakovic just kind of faded, he caught fire in that Lakers series, and it, he's old, I mean, that's what it comes down to. For LeBron James, though, let's get into this. Last night, three of eleven shooting, zero of three from the free or uh, from the three points from three point land, two of four from free, from the free throw line. I mean, it was just embarrassing the way he played. I know he still had seven assists. I know he still had nine rebounds, and that's a great thing about LeBron James, and that's what makes him the best player in the world. Even on a night when he shoots so shitty that he can only score eight points. He still has nine rebounds and seven assists. He was not that far from a triple-double, although I don't really consider that a triple-double. I, I don't know. I just it, it's, it's A real triple-double to me is 20 points, 10 boards, 10 assists. That's the way I look at it. But I, I think there's a few things going on with LeBron James now. And a lot of it has to do with what the media stirred up. I think that LeBron is getting somewhat worried about his image. LeBron James, to me, has always come off as a nice guy. Did he come off as a douchebag in the decision? Yeah, he did. But so do a lot of other stars, and no one holds that against. And I think that he's trying to, on a national spotlight, not look like a dick, because I don't think he is. I think he thinks, I'm a nice guy, I've never really gotten in trouble in this league. What did I do wrong that I deserve this? And I think on a, if he looks like a nice guy on a national spotlight, maybe he can win some fans back. That's just not the place to do it, though. The place to do it is go charity to charity, do stuff, and winning cures all. As Kobe Bryant would tell him, winning cures all. When you win, people are willing to forget about the stupid things you did off the court. Now, obviously, Kobe Bryant was in trouble for a lot more serious things than hosting a television show, and I understand that, and, you know, to even compare them is probably wrong, but... It was the best comparison I could think of. I think another thing is, though, that everyone's so worried about who the finals MVP is. Who cares? I mean, really. LeBron James has zero chance of being the, uh, being the finals MVP because no matter what he does, no the fans are the ones who vote for this award, and there's no way in hell... There, there will be people who go on there to... Just trash LeBron James. Even if they didn't watch the games, do whatever, they will vote for Dwayne Wade just to make sure LeBron James does not win. 
it's a popularity contest, and right now LeBron has a lot of haters. So he needs to stop worrying about that. Let Wade win. You just have to be a piece right now. Even if Wade is the number one, you being the number two, you can go get a rank. The same way Kobe was the number two to Shaq, and it's a little different because at that time, Kobe Bryant was not considered the best player the way LeBron James is by people with actual common sense now. But it, your first ring, I think you can win it and be the second tier guy to Wade. Because let's not forget, they might have not even beat the Celtics. They for sure wouldn't have beat the Bulls if LeBron James isn't on this team. So those of us who look at it with unbiased stance understand that and you understand that you know what he's not having a great series right now and he's not getting it done to the level he needs to but if he can go out there and have 25 points I don't think we're gonna say he choked at least LeBron James last night straight up choked end of story there's no other way to look at it he choked you know and that, that to me does not make him a choker but it means that in one game he choked he played awful and he choked and there's no other way to phrase it nice. I can sugarcoat it if you want, but I j that's not the type of person I am. Let Dwayne Wade be the MVP. You be you. Now, coming back for Game 5, it's in Dallas. I mean, I looked at Game 3 and I said, whoever wins that game wins the series. But I almost feel that same way about Game 5. I mean, going up 3-2, I know last year the Celtics went up 3-2 and the Lakers came back to win in 7 but that doesn't happen a ton. Usually the team that goes up 3-2 is going to be the team that ends up winning the series. They got to step it up. They got to step it up. And if this game, if this series can go two or three more games, and LeBron James can have 30 points or 40 points, I still don't think because of these last two games, I don't think he probably is going to deserve the MVP of the finals. Not that he'll win it anyway. But he can get a lot of people off his back if he can have two, like, really really good games like 30 points six assists and eight rebounds then I think a lot of people will just have to shut up because you can say well in game four he sucked and in game three he wasn't as good as he needs to be well a they won in game three and B I think when you when you really look at it you can have one bad game in the finals without being labeled a choker you can't have a whole bad series that's what I think about it so I'm Tim Leave your thoughts, I'll see you later.